Hello everybody and welcome to your second tutorial on creating a platformer using a Lego 5. So in the last tutorial we learned how to create uh, you do the create the singleton pattern uh in order to for our screen manager class. Uh so now we're going to be making a game screen class and what the game screen class is going to do is that it's going to be the base class for all the screens in our game. So for example, uh, just like I said in the last tutorial, when we have our splash screens, uh, etc., etc., it's going to set. Uh, it's going to be the base class for each of the screens. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, you should know by uh, the end of this tutorial or uh, later uh, down the line when we work more with screen states. So we're going to create a brand new class, and we're going to name it Game Screen. And we're just going to click Finish. So we have a game screen class right here, and what we want to do is we want to include a Lego 5, Lego H. Now, before we even start anything, we want to link it, and I don't know if this is the right linker settings, uh, but yeah, we want to link the project first, uh, and yeah. So after we've do, after we've done that we want to create three virtual methods okay so we have virtual uh, void load content we have virtual void update and lastly we have virtual void draw and we have our allegro display right here uh, and display we want to have an ampersand there because uh, we just want to get the display. We don't want to create the pointer to it, just make a reference to the display. So what are virtual methods? For those of you who don't know what virtual methods are, uh, virtual methods are a part of polymorphism. They allow us to distribute the same methods within each of the derived classes. And therefore, whenever we use polymorphism, we can call that derived classes. Um, we can call their their method according to what class it's pointing to and uh... that was kind of vague uh... that was kind of a vague explanation but you should understand it by the end of this series uh... so we have we have our virtual methods uh... so we could yeah we should uh... right now we we don't have any uh... any default behavior we want with them but uh, we will have our load content uh, for now and we have our updates and we have our draw okay so So we got our three virtual functions right there. So this is how we're going to utilize it. Well, the way our our functions are going to work is that we're going to, whenever we don't need the memory, wait, there's one more thing we need to include. That's what I forgot. So there's one more thing that we have to include, and that is the another virtual method. And we need to do unload content. So whenever we need to use the information, we're going to load it in, and whenever we don't need it anymore, then we're going to unload it. We're going to unload the memory, okay? So therefore, uh, this is a good skill to have, especially if you're making large games. Uh, it's good to have because there's no point in using resources that you don't need. So we get rid of them when we don't need them, and then we reload them when we need them again, okay? So... uh. So we got our we got our game screen set up. So we need to go back to our our screen manager. Uh, so in our screen manager class, we're going to include an instance of our game screen, and we're going to say game screen, and we'll say current screen, and we'll have a new screen. Okay, so current screen we're on the new screen that we're going to be on 
so we will be making a screen stack as well but we're not going to be uh, focusing on that this uh, tutorial so uh, in our initialize so what we need to do is we need to get rid of this so just to test uh, certain things with the screen manager uh, so we need our real methods with the screen manager and what these are is for the initialize oh why did I get rid of that okay so we have in our public area we have initialize load content we have our update and we have our draw so in our initialize whenever we call screen manager initialize and uh, you guys might be saying why not have it in the constructor or something well first of all uh, the constructor is a private constructor and we we can still use constructors but the thing about uh uh, having an initialize method is that you can call it more than once. You can call it multiple times. Uh, so if we need to reset certain things, like reset the program or something, we can just call screen manager initialize, and then we'll reset all the values that we needed to reset to. Okay. Uh, so void screen manager initialize. Okay, and then the initialize we're gonna set. Well, these should be pointers. Okay, so it should be a pointer and a pointer. Okay, and we're gonna set current screen is going to be equal to. Uh, we're supposed to be equal to this current screen that we're gonna be displaying, but we don't have. A screen yet so what we're gonna do is just create a brand new class quickly and we're going to name it splash screen and we'll finish that and include game screen and inherit from game screen so public game screen okay so if we go back to our screen manager class we actually need to go to the screen manager dot h and we need to set the splash screen dot h in there as well and we're going to go to screen manager at cpp and say screen uh current screen is equal to new splash screen okay so basically since since if we notice in screen manager the game screen is equal to uh the current screen but uh and that's of a game stream type instance but since uh the splash screen derives from it then we can uh set it to that as well right and uh for our load content our screen manager is going to we're going to have current screen load content and we're going to have our update current screen update so we update the current screen that's being displayed and lastly we say current screen draw and put in display in there Okay, so we got everything set up. Now there is more things that we're going to put into the screen manager class, uh, such as transitions. Uh, so that's going to be for the next tutorial, but because uh, we need to, before we can even get more into the screen state and stuff, we need to have a transition system to go from one screen to the next screen. So the way we're going to handle transition is that when, when we press a transition from one screen to another screen, we're going to make it fade out and then fade back in with the new screen but that will be for the next tutorial so i hope you enjoyed this thanks for watching and bye